Welcome to the Town of Amenia reorganization meeting, Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. Please rise and salute the flag. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency exits are to my right next to the town clerk and also the door we came in. Roll, please. Councilman Delanco? Here. Councilman Gutierrez? Here. Councilwoman Doyle? Here. Supervisor Purdy? Here. And let the record reflect Councilwoman Hitzelberger will be absent this evening. Um, I wanted to make a change in the um, reorganization meeting and do other matters first because we have um, some resignations to accept. So this evening I present to the board two resignations. I present Tara Mori, effective December 27th as deputy tax collector. And I also uh, present Tanya Shook as bank reconciliation for the town clerk's office. Make a motion that we accept uh, regretfully the resignation of Tara Mori as deputy tax collector and Tanya Shook as the um, bank, bank, reconcil re bank reconciliation. Um, Second. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. Thank you. And we also have a also this evening, I present to you, um, I did receive a bid in for snow plowing uh, for the, the period of January 3rd, 2017. He submitted two bids. So one, the first period is extending until May 31st of 2017 with a dollar amount of $7,500 uh, $7, or then from 1-1-2017 1, 1, until December 31st of this year, $14,500. These prices will include plowing and ice control of all listed sites on the bid sheet, parking lots and sidewalks. Uh, they do carry liability and property damage insurance as well as New York State workers comp. And this one bid is being submitted by Kindred um, Property Care. And that's for the, um, the sidewalks in Armenia and Wasaic and the only area um, and count that also counts the um, tennis, the sidewalk that the town owns by the tennis court or basketball court. When is he coming out? Is there an amount on the snow? I know that, I mean, based off of, bid specs. you know, the bid specs, uh, per the bid specs, uh, a minimum snow depth of two inches. So the, the specifications that were used as part of the announcement were the same specs as last year with the modification of removing the town hall parking lot with that being completed by highway. And the sidewalks we'll be doing ourselves, the town hall sidewalks and the stairs. Well, this is the only bid we got. And I think it makes more sense to take the January through December because that actually covers the budget um, time. We'll have to um, take this money at a contingency. I would say if we're going to do this, go from January to May, and I think there should be a better plan taken up 
over the springtime and summertime that will give us a little bit of time to decide other ways, redoing the bid specs, you know, because every time we hire someone, there's always an issue. Wasake doesn't get clean, Dominion doesn't get clean, there's snow being piled here, there's snow being piled there. I do think... The bid specs specifically spell out which streets need to be done. It spells out which streets need to be done. It doesn't say when they need to be done. It has a minimum of two inches. Now, does that count? Is he coming out here? If there's one section of sidewalk that floods and it doesn't have proper drainage, is he spreading salt on that? You, you know? I mean, I just, I, I'm all for taking a bid spec from January to May. And then I think this deserves some pretty good discussion this summer so we can actually be set for this before the winter time comes. In other words, um, do you want to interview people who, because I mean, we're really going by this, the bid specs have basically been, you know, what streets yeah, but, but like I said, again, we're, we're talking bid specs on what streets, and, y you know, I, I understand that, but every year we have a problem with something. Y you know, either the snow is being piled here, the snow is being piled there, or this one's not getting cleaned. Who's responsible if there is a slip and fall? Y you know, we went through that last year. Now, you know, my whole theory is, is if the town is going to take the responsibility of cleaning the sidewalks and stuff like that, you should probably release the general public. We shouldn't be responsible. If we own sidewalks in front of our property and the town is paying someone to take care of them, we should be released of liability. Well, that's a town law. I, I understand that. But this is what I'm saying. I, I think this should be planned out a little better come summertime. You know, when we have time, we're not up against it. We caught everybody off guard this year because we did it the last 15 years, and now all of a sudden this year we didn't do it. Um, I don't think we had a proper plan in place. So, again, I'm for saying yes from January to May, and then as soon as the warmer weather comes, this should be on the agenda. It should be on our to-do list for the summer to actually figure out a good solid plan for this that's just my feeling well is that something you want to take on sure I would agree that we only we choose the uh, the period through May because um, it we can then evaluate whether or not this company is in, if, as effective as we'd hoped and um, make a plan B and advertise again if that's not. If that's I mean, to May 31st, it's a little, how many times do you just plow snow in May? Well, we have had snowstorms in April, so. Uh, and the bid specs go to May? The, May, the bid it's specs just go six, to May 1st. Yeah. They go to May 1st. Six six he went to May 31st. Half, yeah, he put yeah, May 31st on year. there. I think this Because we have had storms in April. And 7,500 seems about commensurate with what we have had in the past for a half a year, right? I and mean, that's about half of what we've budgeted in the past. Actually, yes. It's more in line with what we've paid other than last year where, you know, we pay more than we usually do. So does someone want to make a motion? to accept the 7,500, or what do you want to do? Well, I'll make a motion to accept the bid up until May 31st for 7,500 from Kindred Property Care for plowing and ice control for town of Amenia and Wasaic. I'll second it. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Okay, I think what we usually do is um, when we're going through all the motions and appointments is to go around the table and we'll each read one. 
So I'll start with motion to accept Town of Amenia rules of procedure, committee guidelines and procurement policy. I make that motion. I'll second it. Councilwoman Doyle? <coughs> yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And throughout all the motions, Councilwoman Hitzelberger will be noted as absent. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Damien? Motion to establish date, time, place for scheduled town board meetings. Business workshop, first Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. Regular meeting, third Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. Place Town Hall, 4988 Route 22, Amenia, New York, 12501. Second it. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to establish elected officials' salaries as noted. Supervisor, $23,540.31. Councilman, Councilwoman, four, $5,872.72. Sole Assessor, $29,983.80. Justices, two, $17,579.27. Town Clerk, $29,555.36. Highway Superintendent, $59,365.84. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to appoint Denise Fitzpatrick, Esquire, as town attorney. Uh, that's um, for the general uh, attorney to the town for general matters, $180 an hour. Litigation, $210 an hour. Paralegals will be uh, uh, billed at $80 per hour. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Delango? No. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Motion to accept appointments and salaries as noted. Bookkeeper Marge Arnold, 22 hours a week, $16.16 an hour. Alternate per diem bookkeeper Lorna Sherman, $25 an hour. Bank reconciliation clerk for the bookkeeper, Diana McPadden, two hours a month, $15.45 an hour. Treasurer to Water District, Katrina Gore Alexander, $3,926.85 salary. Clerk to Water District, Tara Mori, $3,926.85 salary. Town Clerk Special, I'm sorry, Town Court Special Prosecutor, Hillary Thomas, $145 an hour. Attorney for Old Amenia Landfill per contract, Kimberly Ray Esquire, $200 an hour. Budget Officer, Supervisor, Consultant, $5,050. Secretary to Supervisor, Annette Culligan, $15.60 an hour. Typist Part-Time, Tara Mori, 20 hours a week, $15.60 an hour. Code Enforcement Officer, Michael Segleton, 30 hours a week, $26.46 an hour. Building Administrator Assistant, PM, Katrina Cora Alexander, 16 hours a week, $17.69 an hour. Building Administrator Assistant, AM, Judy Westfall, 16 hours a week, $15.45 an hour. Registrar of Vital Statistics, Dawn Marie Klinger, $10 per transaction. Tax Collector, Dawn Marie Klinger, $4,728.16 salary. Bank Reconciliation Clerk, Town Clerk, Wendy Farnham, $15.45 an hour. Planning Board Secretary, Judy Westfall, 24 hours a week, $15.45 an hour. Zoning Board of Appeals Secretary, Susan Metcalf, 10 hours a week, $17.14 an hour. Alternate Zoning Board of Appeals Secretary, Tara Mori, 10 hours, $15.60 an hour. Planning Board Co-Chairman, Tony Robustelli, Pete Clare, $1,313.63 each. Planning Board and ZBA Attorney Dave Everett, $225 an hour. First Deputy Town Clerk Nancy Luther, $15.60 an hour. Second Deputy Town Clerk, uh, that position's vacant, and Records Management Clerk, that position is also vacant, and both of those are $15.45 an hour. 
Assessor's Clerk Donna Morrison, $15,429.61 salary. Data Collector John Lloyd, $17.59 an hour. Chief Police Constable Christopher Klinger, $17.15 an hour. Police Constables Jason Dean, Wayne Jackson, $15.76 an hour. Francis Lansing, $15.30 an hour. Justice Clerk Maureen Moore for Honorable Moore. And Justice Clerk Don Marie Klinger for Honorable Divine are both $16,593.92 salary. Highway Foreman Andy Wheeler, $23.58 an hour. Highway Laborers Alan Wilbur, $23.08 an hour. Darren Peterson, $21.58 an hour. Megan Chamberlain, $22.55 an hour. Arthur Parrott Sr., $22.05 an hour. Highway Office Manager Judy, Judith Carlson, 15 hours a week, $16.08 an hour. Groundskeeper Cleaner John Culligan, 20 hours a week, $15.76 an hour. Maintenance Mechanic John Scott, $25 an hour. Recreation Groundskeeper Sean Howard, $18.38 an hour. Assistant Recreation Groundskeeper Charles, Charles Mayville, $15.60 an hour. Videographer Public Access Mike Flint, $6,072.13 salary. Animal Control Officer Anthony DeBonis, $9,597 salary. Grant Writer Michael Haggerty, $26.80 an hour. Summer Recreation Director Kathleen Howard, $18.54 an hour. I make that motion. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to execute agreement to spend highway funds in 2017. Second. <laughs> Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to make the following appointments without salary. Deputy Supervisor Vicki Doyle, Town Historian Arlene Iulio, uh, Deputy Highway Superintendent Andy mm -hmm. Wheeler, ZBA Chairman Jeff Barron Winsby, All Hazard Mitigation Victoria Perotti, Records Management Officer Dawn Marie Klinger, Deputy Tax Collector Nancy Luther, Deputy Register of Vit mm -hmm. Vital Statistics Nancy Luther. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Motion to approve $1 million bonding for town officials, supervisor, deputy supervisor, secretary of the town, supervisors, bookkeeper and alternate bookkeeper each, town clerk and deputy town clerk each, tax collector and deputy tax collector each, code enforcement officer and administrative assistant each, justices two each, Court clerks, two each. Constables, four each. Highway superintendent and deputy, each. Second. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Delango. Yes. Councilman, uh, excuse me, Supervisor Prodi. Yes. Motion to establish mileage reimbursement at federal rate of uh, 0.535 cents. A second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. 14. Motion to continue contract SEBI Environmental Services Inc. for water treatment to the water district, $30,000 contractual. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? No. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Motion to pay You're bills on. by resolution. <laughs> Utilities, postage meter, copy machine maintenance, rents, debit service, credit cards, and employee benefits. Second. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Delango. Yes. Supervisor Prodi. Yes. 
sorry, motion to name M&T Bank Corp, Bank of Millbrook, and Salisbury Bank and Trust Company the official depositories for town funds. Second. Councilman, uh, excuse me, Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Motion to designate the Millerton News as the official town newspaper. Second. Second. Either one of us. Doesn't matter. Joy, you got it. <laughs> you pull rank. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Motion to authorize all boards to use tape recorders for aid with minutes and the understanding that the tape does not replace type and accepted minutes. Second. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Delango. The understanding that the tape does not replace typed and accepted minutes. Yes. Supervisor Purdy. Yes. Motion to accept town board auditors as noted. General fund, uh, Councilwoman Doyle, Councilman Gutierrez, highway fund, Councilman Delango, Councilman Hitzelber Councilwoman Hitzelberger, water district, Councilman Gutierrez, Councilwoman Doyle. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Motion to accept town board appointments to standing committees as noted. Recreation Commission, Councilman Gutierrez and Councilwoman Doyle. Amenia Housing Commission, Councilman Delango and Councilwoman Hitzelberger. Wastewater, Councilman Gutierrez and Councilman Delango. Enhancement, Councilman Delango and Councilwoman Doyle. Conservation Advisory Council, Councilwoman Doyle and Councilwoman Hitzelberger. Emergency Response and Safety, mm -hmm. Councilman Gutierrez and Councilwoman Hitzelberger. Ethics, Councilman mm -hmm. Delango and Councilman Gutierrez. Kitchen, Council, mm -hmm. Councilwoman Hitzelberger and Doyle. Water District, Councilman mm -hmm. Delango mm -hmm. and Gutierrez. Trail to Train, Councilwoman Gutierrez, uh, Hitzelberger and <coughs> Councilman Gutierrez. Alternate to all standing mm -hmm. committees will be Supervisor Perotti. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to designate emergency interim successors for Dutchess County Emergency Response. Council members Vicki Doyle, Mike Delango, P. Damien Gutierrez. Second. Gutierrez. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Delango? Yes. And Prodi? Yes. Motion to appoint Deputy Supervisor Vicki Doyle to represent the Town of Amenia at the 2017 Associations of Towns meeting in New York City with Supervisor Prodi as alternate. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to authorize the supervisor's bookkeeper to do pre-audit functions of vouchers, including. Sorry. Including math accuracy checking for sales slips, delivery slips, and pay, paid bills by municipal employees receiving goods. Second. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to authorize a charge of $20 on each check tendered as payment and returned for insufficient funds, including lost payroll checks. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to authorize the supervisor's bookkeeper to make certificate of deposit money market investments of available funds. Second. 
Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. For number 26, we need to change Cedor and Company to RBT. That's the new company's name that they merged with. <coughs> RBT? Yes. Is that me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Motion that RBT perform the annual cash audit procedures as required in town law section 123 and the Uniform Justice Court Act section 2019-A and as described in the fiscal oversight responsibilities of the governing board published by the New York State Comptroller's Office. These procedures will be applied to the offices of the supervisor, town clerk, tax collector, and justice courts for the year ended December 31st, 2017. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Motion that all monthly bank reconciliations of the town clerk and town bookkeeper be made by an outside party. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Sup uh, Councilman Delango? Yes. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Sorry. Motion that monthly budget reports be distributed to all department heads and, and the complete monthly budget report be distributed to the town clerk for public viewing by the town bookkeeper. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Motion that the town board has a responsibility to authorize the attendance of all officers and employees at conferences and training sessions as specifically required per general municipal law 77B. Second. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Motion to accept 2017 schedules for the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Motion to appoint, reappoint the following members to committees, boards. Planning Board, Anthony Rubastelli, co-chair. Pete Clare, co-chair. Eric McEnroe, John Stephanopoulos, Davis Rodesenberg, Matt Deister, Larissa Delango. Zoning Board of Appeals, Jeff Barrett Winsby, chair. David Menegat, John Metcalf, Paula Pelosi, Mike Chamberlain. Board of Assessment Review, Anthony Robert, Chair, Winford Cotier, Vern Fish, Herb Schwager, Steve Bernadette. Recreation Committee, Christopher Klinger, Linda Gregory, Rick Langoon, Acting Chair, Chip Watt, Michelle Simonji, Simonji <laughs> Peter McCaffrey. Ethics. Janine Thorne Schwager, <laughs> Carolyn McEnroe, Charlotte Murphy, Evelyn O'Connell. Conservation, Conservation Advisory Council, David Reagan Chair, Arlene Iulio, Mark Doyle, Michael Peak, Maria Genovese, Lorenzo Scalfani. Emergency Response Committee, Dawn Marie Klinger Chair, Victoria Perotti, Stan Whitehead, Robert Boyles, Aaron Howard Jr., Virgil Shook Jr., Marco D'Antonio, and Michael Singleton. Enhancement Committee, Marilyn Noe, Chair, Tony Castro, Eric Eschbeck, Herb Eschbeck. Trail to the Train Committee, David Reagan and Martin Grossman, Wastewater, Anthony Rubastelli, Brad Revelar, Martin Grossman, Marco D'Antonio, Victoria Alexander, Norm Kaya. Water District Committee, May Jones, Martin Grossman, Marco D'Antonio, Norm Kaya, Bill Carroll. Kitchen Committee, Wayne Uvard, Chair, Linda Gregory, Evelyn O'Connell, Charlene Pollinger, uh, Alan Gamble. Workforce Housing Board, Sue Gregory, Sally Cavello, Joy Johnson, Lorenzo Scalfani. Second. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Delango. Abstain. 
Supervisor Perotti. Yes. Motion that the town clerk maintains custody of all original records, minutes, contracts, <coughs> grants, and documents from the committees, boards, and vendors. Second. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Delango. Yes. Supervisor Prodi. Yes. Motion to appoint RBT as municipal CPA support. Second. Councilman Doyle. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Delango. Yes. And Supervisor Perotti. Yes. Motion to execute resolution number one of 2017, constables authorized to carry firearms. We have that in here. Got to read that one. Got to read it. <clears throat> resolution number two. That's my policy. I got this one last year, too. Yeah. We do it every year. <laughs> <clears throat> Constables authorized to carry firearms as identified resolution number one. one of 2017. Whereas the town board of the town of Amenia adopted a town constable local law number three of 2007 on September 20th, 2007. And whereas pursuant to the town constable local law number three of 2007 and res resolution number one of 2010, the town board may adopt a resolution authorizing a town constable to carry a firearm while carrying out his official duties. Subject to the town constable complying with noted conditions and now therefore be it resolved that the town board hereby authorizes each of the following town constables to carry the firearm identified in this resolution while carrying out his official duties as town constable. Constable Chris Klinger, firearm Glock 23, 40 caliber, Glock 42, 380 caliber. Jason Dean, Glock 23, 40 caliber. Dwayne Jackson, Glock 17, 9 millimeter, Smith & Wesson 915, 9 millimeter. Francis Lansing, Glock 23, 40 caliber. Be it further resolved that the authority granted to each town constable by this resolution shall be subject to each town constable, constable complying with the following conditions. A, the town constable must possess a New York State license to carry the authorized firearm pursuant to the penal law section 400 at all times and must keep proof of such license on file in the town hall. B, the town constable must satisfactorily complete the Department of Criminal Justice Services basic court for peace officers with firearms and deadly physical force training and such other training as the town board and or New York state law may require. C, the town constable must, must provide the authorized firearm at his or her own cost. Make that motion. Second. Councilman Zelenko? No. Councilman Hitzberger's absence. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Supervisor Party? Yes. Okay, there's a resolution there for investment policy, Mike, you need to read. Yes. <clears throat> Adoption of investment policy resolution number two of 2017. Whereas the town of Amenia is required by New York state law to have an investment policy regarding such funds as it collects and administers throughout the year. And whereas the New York State Comptroller's Office has provided towns with an approved investment policy as a guideline to adopt. And whereas the town of Amenia wishes to comply with the law of the Office of the State Comptroller Guidelines, be it there enacted that the town of Amenia adopts the attached investment policy to take effect immediately. You're making that motion? Yes. Second. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Delango? Yes. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. And Supervisor May, interrupt real quick? Yes. Uh, this isn't the, I have to back to resolution number one. This isn't the resolution that I forwarded to you via email. There was a correction in the Smith, there's an update in the Smith and Weston for Duane is a 40. The okay, email, as amended then? As amended. That has to reflect for it. That's why that was the emailing back and forth. Okay. Damien, if we could correct that as amended. You made that motion. If you would just 
Sure. So just tell me as amended. As amended, as Dwayne you... Jackson, Glock 17, 9 millimeter, Smith and Wesson 915, 40. No, caliber. no, no. Take off the 915. It's just the Smith and Wesson 40. 40 caliber. Got it. Smith and Wesson 40, 40, 40 caliber. Thank you. Sorry, I'm. Thank you. Okay, and as uh, there's another resolution under other matters, as a transfer of funds would be resolution number three. Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary, unanticipated to amend the budget. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing revenue line 2555.01 building permits by $59,619.50 and increasing new expense line 50. 50, um, 54104.01 sidewalk CE by $59,619.50 to pay contact construction for pedestrian sidewalk improvements. Whereas budget amendment to the general fund increasing expense line 36201.1 safety inspection PS by $4,000 and increasing 90308.1 Social Security town by $750 and decreasing expense line 9710701105 interest on debt service by $4,750 for additional safety inspection salaries and related social security costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 16202.1.55 buildings EQ public access by $322.61 and decreasing expense line 16204.1.59 building CE heat by $322.61 for equipment upgrade purchase. Whereas budget amendment the general fund increasing expense line 90608.1.37 medical insurance town deductible by $800. Decreasing expense line 90608.1 medical insurance town by $800 for town deductible expenses. Whereas budget amendment in the water fund increasing expense line 83101.6 administration PS by $240.56 and decreasing expense line 83104.6 administration CE by $240.56 for the water treasurer. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board authorizes the transfer of necessary budget lines to process these transactions. And I make that motion. Discussion? Yes. Is that first one right? The budget amendment in the general fund increasing the revenue line 255.01 building permits? Yes. And increasing the new expense line also? Yes. Because you're creating the expense line. That's what we're using to pay the um, contact until we get the grant money to reimburse us for that amount. So you. That's, that's what, um, that's how the municipal CPA told us to. Well, to where do it. is the $59,619.50 coming from to increase the revenue line? The building permits. We're using the building permits revenue. So then you're decreasing the building permit line? No, we're increasing it to account for it. So he's asking where is Where is the this fifty nine thousand six hundred and nineteen dollars coming from though? You have to increase the revenue line and increase the expense line to offset the two. This is the way the um, municipal accountant told yeah, us to do Yeah, but if we have it. to increase one line, we have to take money from somewhere to increase the line. So what line is that fifty nine thousand six hundred and nineteen dollars coming from? It's coming from the building permits. So you're taking it out of the building permit line, which is 2555-01. Mm -hmm. So you're increasing that line right. by $59,619. Right, to account then, for it. Then you're taking that money and you're putting it into the 54104.01. Right. But I still don't understand where the $59,610 is coming from. Because if you're taking it out of the building permit line, you should be decreasing the building permit line and increasing the other line. But you have to account for it. So when the grant money comes in, it's going to go to the building permit line, I guess? Yes. 
also the community development block grant line. No, I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is we're increasing that line now by $59,000. So that when that amount comes in, it will go into that line. So technically... The number to zero. It'll balance it out to make it zero, because you're looking at the revenues line. So when you're looking at a revenues line, it's like how we estimated we were going to bring in, you know, $10,000 and say my dog licenses. So you had to show that on the on the budget line when you first open up the budget. I don't know if we have the budgets here, but it, the revenues. So mm -hmm. as you're bringing in the money, it actually starts to slow down. So when you're looking at the budget, we start with 100. And by the month of December, we're usually trying to bring those down to almost a 0%. you got to balance it out. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is, this is how the revenues. municipal account, uh, accountant told us to do this resolution, to account for that money. Because it's just weird to me if it's coming from a grant, there should be a, there should be a grant line as a revenue line. You know, if you're getting that grant, that's money that you didn't collect. It's a grant. So in my mind, there should be a, you know, that that grant should be the revenue. I mean, you're increasing a line. It's basically, I, I mean, is it just numbers? I don't yes. understand. Because the way that I'm looking at this, $60,000, that's kind of nowhere. And you're increasing a line by 60000 but where is that 60000 coming from? So what happens is with your revenue lines, so we estimate we're going to, I'm using 10000 just making an easy number. So I'm telling you I'm going to bring in $10,000 in dog licenses. Every month that I turn my money over, it starts, it actually is like taking it away. So we got to balance it out to zero because at the end with the municipal, you want to have zero back in that money. So she's increasing the line to tell you that it's anticipated revenues is coming in. That's see, where she's telling see you. See, the up. anticipated revenue for, um, for the building line was $60,000. Mm -hmm. And we actually got in a lot more than that, more like almost $130,000. But I, I just, I, I don't know why, and I'm, I'm just don't understand it. I, I mean, my theory when you have a budget, when you see an in and an out, that in has to come from somewhere, and that out has to go somewhere. I, I it's you know. from excessive building permit. We had got more money and, than anticipated, and we know that that money is going to get washed through with a new grant. If I get a grant confirmation of contract mid-cycle, I can't spend out the new $2,000 grant I got until I also increase the revenue line for the same $2,000. So I increase the $2,000 in the revenue and I increase $2,000 in the expense line. It's Does like that make your more dollars. sense? I, I, I you understand. You have to show that that extra money is coming in and the expenses are now going to be offset with that same yeah. amount. This is, this is the way we had, we were told to record it. I mean, I understand that, but do you follow where I'm coming from? Where's yeah. the 60 grand yes. coming from? Right. Yeah. Right. You know, my theory is the 60 grand is coming in on a grant yeah. and we're borrowing the money out of the building permit line to pay the contractor now that when that grant comes in, then we're increasing the, the revenue. It's line. a paper trail, I think, that they have as grant money comes in, there will be that amount specifically in this resolution that says, yes, that anticipated money comes in, the check comes in, and it goes, boom, right into that account. It's all been set out and clear in the resolution where that money goes and what it's for. The same with the dance program. The 2000 comes in, we do a resolution, we say, increase that, re uh, it's going to go for supplies. And it's in there, and the exact amount, the $2,000 from you know, Berkshire Taconic. And so when it comes in, that check comes in, she deposits it right away into that line because it's already been approved. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're, we're I, I always <laughs> forget to increase the revenue line. You have to do both. Yeah. You can't spend it out until you've done. But I just don't understand why there's not a revenue line for grants. I don't either. I, I mean, they may not have it particularly out there. Sometimes we put the money into state aid. You know, I mean, I mean because if you look back through this three years match. from now, you're going to say the building permit they killed it. Paid the, the um, <laughs> sidewalk. Right. They but it but in if the accounting people say that's the appropriate line for it, I think that's what they're going to have to do is, is uh, reconcile it all for the final year end report AUD. There may, must not be an appropriate line that's appropriate for just this one time, but we have had community development block grants, so I'm surprised there isn't an existing line. But because. There, is, there isn't a line. The only thing you can do with a community development block grant is to record it. 
that you're going to receive it. And there is a line at the end of the budget that I put in the budget that says, you know, we have the $100,000 from Trail of the Train. We have, you know, it all gets recorded there. It's, oh, it's monies that will eventually come to the town, but that's where you record at. Okay. Good. We have a motion made. I'll second it. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Councilman Delango? No. Okay. Supervisor's goals for 2017. Continue to work with state officials to identify highway garage potential building sites that can be conveyed to the town under public lands law in order to move forward with financing and construction. Work with the DOT and WSB cells to finalize Trail of the Train final design so financial planning and construction can begin in 2017. Complete the commercial kitchen update according to architect's donated hours plan by working with the grant writer and kitchen committee on grant applications to foundations and, secur and securing other monies after removing asbestos and lead from the tiles, walls, and ceiling. Institute new water laws with appropriate fees and penalties so everyone in the water district pays their fair share and allows the water operator to change or repair defective meters. Town board comments? Anything, Amy? I'll just say that I was, um, you know, I'm extremely pleased to each year be involved in the Citizen of the Year Award in both Wasik and Amini. I think it's a great way to end the year is recognizing some of the amazing contributions that people have given to this town, do on a regular basis, very quietly, and it's amazing to think of the uh, work that's done without compensation, compensation without um, a lot of fuss. And Dave Reagan was our um, Wasaic Citizen of the Year, and I think everybody knows the contribution he's made as a teacher for all those years, but directly to the town, he's been the CAC um, chair. He's a wonderful person. If you feel like you have time and interest to join the CAC, we all agree um, on the CAC that he is an amazing teacher. We learn things we never learned, never knew about geology and the natural resources and the cultural resources. He's an amazing resource. He's been doing a, an inventory with our help, and if you want to learn more about the resources in Amenia, you can learn a lot by coming once a month to our third Wednesday, 7 o'clock, uh, meeting here in this room and it's a lot of fun and we learn a lot um, and then the other person who was citizen of the year that I congratulate and um, sadly uh, he's no longer with us is Kevin Casson who everybody knows as helping with the Lions Club helping selflessly with the um, plantings in the middle of the town making the town center more attractive and working hard on the garden tour and making sure that the um, beautiful, uh, the things that make Amenia so beautiful and um, enhances our, our uh, townscape, you know, town centers. He's just been, you know, working tirelessly, especially when Veterans Day came around. He would work very, very hard to get the town, uh, Fountain Square looking as good as it can. So I want to thank him and um, Gretchen for all their efforts making that uh, that happened over all these years. That's all. Um, one thing to, to add to Vicki, what you have, I guess it's kind of a question. Why do we do Amenia and Wasik? We have always um, done two uh, separate uh, programs, both uh, for the Holiday of Lights, um, because there's a nucleus of people down in Wasik. Uh, we decorate that separately. We have a fire department that shows off their, you know, parade of lights, and we have a firehouse where is a perfect nucleus for kids within walking distance to get to that. If we've done it, tried it just here in Amenia, and there are families who do not 
are not able to participate for whatever reason. This is a nucleus that's down there that's hardworking, that produces their own Santa and their own gifts, and, and it works um, that way. Lantern Inn is kind of the focal area, and it just celebrates the two nucleuses of, of towns. Right, and because it just, it seems to me, I mean, a big problem, not a big problem, I, I do notice there is a divide in this town. I mean, we are the town of Amenia. Waseca is a part of Amenia, just like so is, you know, South Amenia, so is, you know, um, Smithfield Valley. You, you, you know, it, it's almost like, and, and I don't have a problem per se having two things at once and everything else, but it, it's kind of like you're, I don't want to say driving a wedge, but it's almost like you're singling out certain things for Armenia and for Wasake. And, you know, my true belief is this town is one town. And it just seems like we're cultivating a divide. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know, maybe it's for further discussion to see if we could get everybody together and stop singling out you know where we're from and what we're doing. We do have a meeting um, where we can discuss. So, you know, she's uh, Marilyn Noe is the new chair of the enhancement committee, and she's right. been trying to bring together. Um, you can go to the. Um, you can go to the podium oh, and announce the timing okay. and. <clears throat> uh, Mike, the time uh, for the meeting is. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Tuesday, January 17th at 5.30 right here, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to have, um, obviously, you two as liaison people, but more importantly, um, uh, representatives from the fire police, from the fire department, from the library, et cetera. And um, um, there's definitely some room for improvement, you know, over this past year and um, so it'll be kind of a brainstorming kind of a exchange of ideas etc kind of stuff um, I do know with Wasaic um, not that I've ever been directly involved but I th believe that there's long-standing traditions um, regarding their, um, you know, in other words, their, uh, how they get their gifts and um, uh, with the was it involving the Wasaic Fire Department, et cetera, kind of stuff, so. But I understand what you're saying. You, you, you're well, looking for more community uh, involvement. Yeah, and it's not as much as the, the, the Enhancement Committee. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, my question was on the, the, the dual, you know, you have a, um, person of the year for Wasake and a person of the year for Amenia. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I, I understand the logistics are things, things are separated and one fire company does their thing, another fire, I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess my thing is when it comes to the citizen of the year, mm -hmm. you, you know, we're separating it. It's oh. like we're separate towns, you, you know? I mean, I would love to see a community day where if we could find somewhere halfway between Amenia and halfway between Wasake mm -hmm. and just have one big party, you, you know? But I guess what I was hitting more on was the Citizen of the Year mm -hmm. award. As That's far easy as, enough to change. As far as the, poly, you know, the, the things that the fire companies do, I do understand that because there are, mm -hmm. you, you know, different people, they can't travel and stuff like that. I do understand that. I'm just thinking, you know, when you're naming a Citizen of the Year for Wasake and a Citizen of the Year for Amenia, you're causing that divide, mm -hmm. you, you know? I mean, there's a lot of things that have been done with tradition and everything else that have gone away yeah. when times change. Well, you, we could, you know? this is something, one of the many things that we can discuss um, okay. um, on the step. And I'll, I'll send you. Um, Beautiful. Okay, I'll send you a, a flyer. All right, then one other thing I have is um, we didn't read the guidelines for the town of Amenia committees. All right, number one, all committees are established and dissolved by the town board. Now, is there a certain procedure for that? I think you just make a motion and say, I'd like to establish a, a committee called blah, blah, and uh, we then I think he's thinking it, right? about dissolving. Oh, dissolving. Yeah. 
you know, dissolving or establishment. I mean, it says it here, all committees are established and dissolved by the town board. I mean, is there a process that we go through to do that? I mean, if someone wants to be a committee, do they present it to the town board and then we decide what happens? I mean, if we have defunct committees, do we decide if it's going to be a committee anymore? Um, that was one question on that. Well, who decides if it's defunct? That's what I'm getting at. Y you know, we don't know. We have a rule here that we have the power, but we don't know what power we have. I don't know if it's in a handbook or something like that. No. All right. Number two, all committee members must be a resident of the town of Amenia. What considers a resident of the town of Amenia? We've been through this before. Is it voting where you vote? Is it where your driver's license says? Do you pay taxes in the town? Are you considered a resident? You know, this is another thing that, you know, it came up a couple times in the last three years that I've been on the board, and we never actually stated what a resident, resident well, we, is. Yeah, we did. No, we, we did. Didn't. It we was did. very indecisive. Well, uh, David Rosenberg was not uh, appointed to a uh, board because he wasn't yet a resident as uh, uh, the most conservative application, which is you'd have to vote in this town. So when he was moved full time here and uh, registered to vote here, then he was then accepted. So I think that pattern alone but shows we that had, we made a decision. When we had that discussion, we paid Dave Ebert to research this. Yeah. And, and basically what he said was, is there was no law stating what makes a resident. Right. The town had to establish Doesn't what made have a resident. To, but we did by making the decision with the Rosenberg. I think we set a precedent that says you need to be Okay, here. but now it's Why a precedent. Why would the, we then change our mind and then do it differently for somebody else. Who knows, maybe the board changes. <clears throat> well, you can establish a, a policy, so di were you thinking of, um, of, of um, putting forth a policy on this issue well, you know, based on Dave's recommendation? It's just cloudy, you, you know what I mean? And when you have cloudy, it depends on who reads it. And you might interpret it different than I do. Mm -hmm. And my theory is, is if we could it's a yes or no. So why don't you propose a policy okay. based on our, you know, you know, that would make sense based on what voting we've already made? Because you know, my my whole thing is we're light on volunteers, and I don't want to begrudge people because they don't vote here, or because they do vote here, or because they don't have a driver's license here. Y you know, I agree. I think we should make the the. Be as inclusive as possible. That's my personal opinion, but we didn't do so in the case of I Rosenberg. Just, I so just think I'd there be should, happy to create a policy that there just should clear. be something that's clear. Yeah. Again. I think it's great. You know, um, committee members, blah, blah, blah. All committees have a chairperson. All committee members will have a member of three members plus two non-voting town board members. Um, committee projects, recommendations will be presented to the town board workshop prior to the town board approval. Are we receiving the minutes from the committees? Not all. Not all. Okay. And I, several times throughout the year, I do give reports to the board members. That's been part of my re report in the past, who I'm updated by and who I'm not, so. Aren't they put on the website? those that I get. And they have to be typed, unfortunately, which means, you know, somebody needs to take that responsibility seriously. I think that's all I have right now. Is there any other town board comment? Public comment? I have a comment then. Okay. Well, it's helpful, but um, I just want to welcome again everybody for um, and wish everybody a healthy and happy new year. Um, I will not be at the next town board meeting, so I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to remind all town residents that this month town taxes are going to be mailed, 
and they are due in the town clerk's office without penalty by the end of February, the last day of February. Um, so you're going to be hearing me talk about town taxes for the next five months. So this is the first official announcement, 2017 taxes will be made available on our website, um, hoping by the 20th of this month. I'm just waiting for the paperwork to come out from the county, but usually by mid-month I have them posted and you'll be available to pay online as well. Can I ask uh, Absolutely. an ill-informed uh, question? Absolutely. Are you now a four-year term or did that get defeated at the last vote? I did not receive anything either way. You still, they haven't determined. I haven't received an official letter. Okay. But we know what, I mean, the results were posted on saying that it was. Right. Year. So it's still not official. So I, I like to see the official letter, like. To let you know. To, yeah, mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Okay. I just was official, curious. Official, official. Okay. But just giving that friendly reminder, town taxes are due. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Marilyn Noe Amenia. Uh, just curious, um, what is um, the status of um, Gretchen Hitzelberger? Is she going to be returning in um, the new, you know, for the board meetings, or uh, do you not know at this point? We don't have a status. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Motion to adjourn. Second. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes.